This is the basic graph for radioactive decay. Anytime you're doing a radioactive decay problem, you want to draw a graph that looks like this. The idea of radioactive decay, remember that we have an unstable nucleus. We have an unstable nucleus, which means that after a while, it decays into a different type of nucleus. And that means, so capital N here is standing for the number of nuclei. You want to have you notice that capital N is the number of nuclei remaining. And n sub 0 is the original number of nuclei. So this point over here would be n sub 0. This is the original number of nuclei. Notice that the number of nuclei then is continually falling. You would expect that to happen with radioactive decay, because remember that the, the nucleuses are decaying and turning into something else. So we have less and less of the original amount of nucleus until eventually we're asymptotically approaching zero nucleuses yeah. remaining. So this is our basic exponential graph for nuclear, de nucle nuclear decay. Another important concept is the radioactivity, or the activity of the sample. The symbol for that is A. That's the activity or the radioactivity, and that tells you how many decays are happening per second. The unit for A is the number of decays per second. You recognize this symbol stands for proportional. It should make sense that the amount of decay is proportional to the number of nucleuses. For example, if you had twice as many nucleuses, you would have twice as many decays per second. Or if you have four times as many nucleuses, you would have four times as many decays per second. Or putting it another way, if you only have 10% of your original nucleuses, you should only have 10% as much radioactivity. Or if you only have 1% of your original nucleuses, you should only have 1% radioactivity of what you started with. So A and N are going to be proportional to each other. In fact, we can make this into an equation. The constant of proportionality is lambda. Lambda is what's called the decay constant. Lambda tells you the percent decay per unit time. For example, let's say we have this equation. Well, this would tell us that 12% of the nucleuses are uh, decaying each day. Yeah. This would mean 12% of the nucleuses are decaying each day. So this shows that lambda is the percent decay per unit of time. Remember that this tells us that the radioactivity is proportional to the number of nucleuses. But if you think about it, that means that the graph for the radioactivity should look exactly the same as the graph for the number of nucleuses. You start out at the highest maximum radioactivity, and then the radioactivity should keep falling, because the fewer nucleuses there are, the less radioactivity there's going to be. So the curve for A looks exactly like the curve for N. And because these are proportional, any equation that works for A is pretty much going to work for N as well. The equations for A are going to have the same form as the equations for N. So here's an equation for solving problems with n. If you know the original number of nucleuses, you can use this to figure out how many nucleuses are left. Remember that n0 is the original number of nucleuses. n is how many nucleuses are left. Lowercase t is how much time has elapsed. Lowercase t tells us how much time has elapsed. We just saw that lambda is the decay constant. It tells us what percentage are decaying per unit time. So what's the equation for a? 
That's right. Because since they're proportional to each other, the equation that works for n should also work for a, because a and n are proportional to each other. Now, sometimes when we're talking about how radioactive something is, we talk about its lambda. But sometimes, instead, we talk about its half-life. The symbol for half-life is t to the subscript 1 half. This is just the symbol for half-life. So you don't want to confuse that with lowercase t. t is how much time has elapsed, but t to the 1 half is the half-life. For example, carbon-14 has a half-life, if I remember right, of 5,730 days. What does that tell you about it? Half of it decays in 530 days. That's right. How would we show that on our graph? Well, if we started over here, half of the decay would happen right here. So this would have to be 5730 days. And then how long would it take for the, um, the remit, uh, to decay by half again? Another 5730 days. So when we got to here, we would be twice 5730. <laughs> What's twice 5730? That's 60. Um, 10, 11, 11,460, uh, 11, something like that. Okay, so that tells us what the half-life is telling us. We can always put that into our graph over here. And by the way, if it takes this long for half of the nucleuses to decay, for you to get to only half of your original nucleuses, that also means it takes this long to get to half of your original radioactivity. So your radioactivity would fall by half in this amount of time as well. Well, if you're given t in the half-life instead of lambda, you need different equations, because these equations don't have the half-life. I think you were given the equation here. Oh, no, you weren't given the equation. Don't worry. Is it homework? No, you weren't given the equation. The equations are in the book. So now the equations are Here's the equation for the number of nucleuses remaining. n equals n sub 0 times 2. And make sure you write this exponent right. This is negative t divided by the half-life. This is t with the subscript 1 half for the half-life. It's hard to write all these little numbers. t with the subscript 1 half for the half-life. So what would be the equation for the radioactivity in terms of half-life? a equals a not c or negative c over c. Except this is the number 2, not a z. Oh, 2. Sorry. So these, uh, it doesn't look like a z, does it? <laughs> so these should have been the number 2. If you're given a problem with lambda, you probably want to use one of these equations. If you're given a problem with half-life, you probably want to use one of these. However, Here's our last equation. Lambda times the half-life equals the natural log of 2. Uh -huh. But this means that if you know lambda, you can figure out the half-life. Or if you know the half-life, you can figure out lambda. And that means it's just a matter of taste, whether you want to use the lambda equations or the half-life equations. Even if you're given lambda, you can still use the half-life equations. You just have to figure out the half-life using this. So we ended up with five key equations here that you want to have in your cheat sheet for the test. One, two, three, four. These are the key five equations for nuclear decay. And now we have to see how to do the algebra on these equations. By the way, who would be bigger, n or n0? n0. n0 is always bigger. Because N0 is the original maximum number of nucleuses. It's all downhill from there, right? And A0 is bigger than A. So when you're using these equations, you have to know what to plug in for N and what to plug in for N0. We always plug in the bigger number for N0, because that's the original number. 